Yarn Ahoy, mateys! I'm Funky Monkey, and welcome to another edition of Funky Monkey at the Movies. With me as ever is my unnamed producer. Hello. <laughs> On this tropical of evenings. And tonight, we've just been to see Pirates of the Caribbean, Salazar's Revenge. Dead Men Tell No Tales, if you're in America. It has two titles. It did have two titles. Yeah, I don't know why they changed it to Salazar's Revenge over here, or why Dead Men Tell No Tales wouldn't play in Britain. Although I was trying to corral those two lovable pirates, Potamus Redbeard and Nancy Gum, and try and get them even onto camera, but my attempts have failed. So, it's uh, him and me. Anyway, the movie. Yep, that was certainly a thing. Is that the best you can come up with? No, 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 no. I had heard, or I had seen, online from one of my film critic friends that uh, Jack Sparrow seemed to give a lazy performance, but I didn't see any sign of it. it looks as Jack as ever. I don't know. I think um, he's kind of maybe it was the story, and because there was a lot going on, but. Yeah, I mean, compared to the first film, where he was a much more in control character, although he had the um, the drunk and the craziness about him, he was also uh, he did a lot of sword fighting in the first one. And he seemed more in control, and there was a lot of double crossing, so you never knew which side he was really on up until the last minute. He was always one of those characters. One of those confusing characters that they try and attach the Dungeons and Dragons sort of class uh, thing to, where they're like the chaotic good or something. Yeah, the alignments. Yeah, that's from it. lawful to chaotic and good to evil. Yeah, and they always try and make him like chaotic good or something, because he's a little bit like Han Solo in that he's like a scoundrel, but ultimately he's a good man. Whereas in this one. He's just sort of a sad drunk. Yeah, kind of. The the uh, the dead are chasing down and I mean he still has some funny moments and things, but It's not his film. Yeah. Although unless that was kind of the point, because I mean it was sort of about how he was sort of down on his luck. And then you know, at the end he's back on top. So that was kind of his arm. Going you know, from kind of zero to hero in that film. Or zero to hero again. Yeah, or to go from zero back to his, you know, his original standing with his crew. As we see the return of the Black Pearl. Yep. So the ship's Oops, back. spoiler alert. Well, it's kind of, the entire thing is a spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Really. And I think you've got an underlying tone of family in it, because you've got the new main character, the son of... Uh, Will Turner and Elizabeth Swan, who's trying to find a way to cure his dad and break the curse. And then you've got Karina Smith, the new female lead, who um, mm -hmm. she's kind of looking for her dad and ultimately finds her dad and finds out who she is. Mm -hmm. And of course there's no spoilers on that. Well, I didn't know it. No, no. And yeah, it was a good reveal, and it sort of humanises the character, who right, who eventually turns out to be Karina's father. We ain't giving it away here. But it kind of opens up that what you need now is a long lost child of Jack Sparrow. Yeah, there's probably a load of those. Yeah, and I mean for a while I did wonder if Karina was going to turn into the long lost child of Jack Sparrow. But... No, 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 no. His entry wasn't as good as in the first film, where he's on that sinking ship. But um, it was quite good, and it led into the whole bank stealing scene. Oh, yes. They were going to rob the bank, they ended up stealing it. When you try to steal an entire bank, you will lose a lot in the process. Not that I'm speaking from experience or anything. I mean, one of the problems I had with it was it was kind of too dark. Not thematically, but... Visually. Visually. 
in terms of when they were at sea, it was like a, a lot of night battles, and it, it made it, I found it harder to see what was going on. I mean, the scene, I think you missed it, but it was kind of swinging between all these cannons and the sort of the prow figurine on Salazar's ship came to life and was trying to kill him as well. And it was a bit dark and you couldn't quite see what was going on a lot. We kind of wasted it, I think. Uh, oh well. But overall, I think it was fun. It was definitely sort of a return to form for the pirate films, I think. Too long to put me in mind of the, the first one again. The new characters were fairly interesting, and admittedly, sort of, um, Jack Sparrow was kind of underplayed, but I don't think there was any fault really in Johnny Depp's performance, because he was still quite funny with what he had. But there wasn't enough swashbuckling in it. There wasn't enough sword fights, I don't think. It was kind of battles, and you got the impression that obviously people were fighting in the battles, but there wasn't so much that you could see people having sword fights with swords. Mm. If you see what I mean. Yeah. I'm going to go out on a limb here and discuss the complete non entity that was the uh, British officer villain played by David Wenham. Did he really need to be in this movie? No, he didn't really do a lot, did he? No. Just sort of chase them around for like the first third of the movie and then get killed. Another distinctly secondary villain. Did he actually die? Uh, that was the impression I got. See, it was just like so inconsequential. I didn't even notice if he did get killed. Yeah. There, one moment, gone the next. Oh, the British Empire will control the seas. Yeah, that happened. Well, it, it did kind of. That was where our kind of, as an island, our navy was like centrally important and that's where a lot of our power came from. We beat like the Spanish Armada and we beat the French and things like that, so. Although we did have an empire that spanned the entire globe. Yeah, but that was in the past. Yeah. These days, we have Britain, and that's enough. I like the zombie pirates. The zombie pirates were quite good. And I mean, the special effects overall were quite good as well. And it, where these ghost people were going about and, like, they were in ghost pieces, sort of like losing an arm and no bodies and things like that. Yeah. Very difficult to do, I should imagine. I mean, with something like that, you've got to get a lot of the green and blue screening right. And you've got to put pieces in, and you can't really put people in, like, full suits for it. But you can give them, like, a uh, keying makeup. So you can at least take out parts of their faces and heads. Yeah, or maybe it was all CGI. Who knows? Maybe. But then with something like that, it'd probably be mocap. We'll probably know once the disc hits and the extras come. Yeah. Do you actually get extras on digital releases these days? Not as far as I can tell. <laughs> Normally you just get the film on digital releases. One more reason to stick to discs for the foreseeable future. Well, I suppose, for some people. At least until they stop making them because they decide it's not profitable enough. Yeah. I mean, I kind of prefer the, the freedom because you can download them. And kind of anywhere you've got an internet connection, you can watch them. But, you know. But I would recommend burning your downloads to disc in case one day they decide to revoke them. As has happened recently with the BBC store. Really? Yeah, the BBC store's closed. Well, I knew that had closed, but surely they can't cut off your purchases. I mean, you've purchased something from them. Well, as of 1st of November this year, people who've bought things from the BBC store will no longer be able to access them, and their money will be refunded. Uh, well, I mean, that's not too bad that they get the uh, money refunded. But anyway. Mm. But back to the movie. Yeah. And I was very disappointed not to see the return of Pintel and Rigetti. Oh, that was the one with the wooden eyeball and... Yeah. Yeah. And uh, his supposed uncle. I've just realised something. Those two on Barbosa's ship... They were Murtog and Mulroy. The guards from the first film. Yeah. I was going to say, because I never knew their name. But yeah, that was them, wasn't it? Yeah. I hadn't realised. Until now, obviously. 
because they'd switch sides at the end of uh, Pirates 3, I believe, when they left um, Norrington's side. Oh, Norrington. I wonder what happened to him. Well, he died, didn't he? He got uh, stabbed by um, Bootstrap Bill. Oh, yeah. I can't even remember that, see. And the thing about Norrington, though, he was a good man, or at least he became a good man. He kind of started out as a good man. He was kind of a tragic figure, really, because he was a good man, and um, he was kind of a lawful person, and he was in his career, and he was very much kind of the uh, traditional... English officer of the times kind of thing, and then obviously everything goes wrong for him, and he ends up being a drunk or whatnot. Yeah, and then he finds the heart of Davy Jones and gets his position back, but then decides it's not worth it, because what has he done when uh, all of the uh, madness on board Davy Jones's ship happens, and then he gets most of uh, Elizabeth Swan and the Pearl's crew to safety, and pays for it with his life. Yeah. And, of course, we must mention that this is, in a way, the capper to the Turner trilogy. Yeah, I suppose so. Though I'd have thought that, um... I think the runtime was too long on that. Possibly. I think they could have cut it down a little bit. Although we did sit through every single second of it for a post credit scene, yeah. which we won't spoil here. Well, there wasn't a huge amount in it, really. No. It just ties into the ending. And pretty much your basic, it was all a dream, or was it, dot dot dot, question mark, kind of thing. Yeah. And I wonder if we'll see more of that weird witch with the weird lines around the face who was in this film. Hmm. Reminds me of Monkey Island's uh, voodoo lady. Maybe. Who may or may not actually have been the villain the entire time. Yeah. Not that they've made any more Monkey Island games. I mean, I thought after Telltale had picked up that license, they would have done more with it rather than just that one. Or we would have seen um, some of the other games updated. I know they redid one and two. I suppose the cartoon style of three leaves it ageless, but it crashes a little bit, so they could have done that a little bit. So, I suppose, to kind of start to wrap it up, I would recommend this film. Yeah. Had good performances, good action, um, maybe a little bit too long, maybe a little bit too dark uh, in terms of the visuals in some places. Um, Maybe not catching all the magic of the original film, but still good. I'm going to give it like 7 out of 10. Okay. A random arbitrary score. Okay, okay. I don't know that it left that much of an impression on me. And I don't know that the story really needed to be wrapped up. Or that the idea of Will Turner turning into the same kind of tragic figure as Davy Jones was something that ever actually occurred to me. I mean, they could have left it another 300 years. Made it so that Jack Sparrow had woken up one day and just been immortal or something. Actually, I remember reading that as somebody's uh, fan fiction idea. But anyway, yeah, it was another triumphant episode, triumphant adventure for Jack Sparrow and the crew of the Black Pearl, which sails once more. And now, once again, Jack Sparrow is king of the seas. A score, then. I think I'll go with uh, my producer, and I'll give this one a 7 out of 10. So, thank you very much for listening, and uh, don't forget to uh, find me on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, I'm on Vidme, 
I'm the best thing on Tumblr, and we finally have our Minds.com presence. The Minds.com um, site is there, you can find the channel name under Two Teens, for the two teenagers in Milwaukee Production Company, that's down as the number two, and then Teens, T-E-E-N-S. Yeah, as you would spell Teens. Um, yeah. But yeah, on Minds, which is like www.minds.com, the uh, new social media platform. Uh, and that'll eventually link to all the content in various locations, like on face, on YouTube, on the VidMe channel, and the SoundCloud stuff. And we'll, as it's a video platform as well, we'll start importing stuff over where I can sort of download it and things. Okay. I'm thinking of putting up the History of Torrican series first. Yeah. Don't forget to check out History of Turrican and House of Love. And don't and forget to check out the Patreon link too. Yes, patreon.com forward slash hole and hot. H-O-L-A-N-D-H-O-T. There's links to that on the mind site as well. Alright, so this has been Funky Monkey and his nameless producer. Thank you for listening and we'll see you at the movies.